Hi, I'm Pratik Gohad. Hi, I'm Lisa Mishra. You are catching us on Jamming With on Midday. I'm going to start um, because I, I, I think a lot of us are feeling the, uh, you know, the, the sadness of not being on stage. So I'm going to ask about your band. Um, how did you put your, your team together? Um, and who are they, basically? Describe that. Uh, it just, it, it happened, right? Like over the years, uh, you meet people and you meet like one person and it starts off with like very few people and then like, you know, they connect you to somebody else and that's kind of how it like went. I mean, initially it was just, uh, uh, for a long time, for almost five years, there was me, Nikhil Vasudevan who plays drums and, uh, Dhruv Bhola who used to play bass with me. Uh, and, uh, we played like shows together basically just as a trio for the longest time. And then this past year, I started working with like, I'm still working with Nikhil, but uh, Bowles went and like, we call him Bowles, and uh, went uh, and he started working more seriously with, seriously with uh, Peter Cat Recording Company, which is like a really cool band. Yeah. If somebody has, you know, has not heard them. And now there's Rohan Rajadaksha, which I think, I think you know him right, as well, right? You know Rohan? I don't think so. He's from- oh, okay. So he's, he's amazing. Dude. He's, uh, he's probably the best at like, just, uh, piano and keyboard i mean he is a genius at that so i started working with him last year and uh, yeah and there's amar pandey so that's your that's the whole amar group. pandey who's on bass who's in delhi yeah so that's primarily who we toured with like all of last year yeah yeah and then it's i mean what do you miss most about that i'm sure there's there's some good good things that you guys do anything specific uh, yeah i mean the whole thing man i mean you know weirdly like uh, and i'm sure you know there's like touring is stressful especially when you're doing a lot of it but uh, yeah. when you're not doing it you're missing it you know it's it's like a it's a to me it's just always not always i mean it's become a love hate relationship really because you know it's yeah. like you like during tour after like the seventh show on the road or like the 20th show on the road you're like i want to go back home and then uh, <laughs> and then like you stop, like this happens and then you're like, shit, I really want to go back on the road. So it's weird. What about you? Our band, same thing came through like a bunch of recommendations. So I originally hired, um, my drummer and my bassist. And then I was using two other like random piece together, you know, guitars and everybody else. But then <laughs> they just kind of took over. They're like we have a full unit. You just use all of us and it flows better. So I, I have the same band. Um, they only, I think they're the only fixed four for me and uh, Aishman Karana. So we um, have the same exact setup. But mm-hmm. good boys. I think the thing I miss most is uh, we had this like family dinner thing after shows. And it's the same food across every city, across every show that we order. <laughs> and, uh, it, and, and I don't know. I think it's for us that... Um, post gig release uh after especially if we have a, a show that lasts something like two hours there's nothing better than like and it's the same order so everyone orders like boneless chicken biryani you have that, that kind of, like that's the, the Dude, same it's setup like a, it's like a tradition like it's a it's, it's our band's tradition is that yeah. post show meal for sure so i think mm-hmm. i missed that um and the boys are all like, we're all the same age. So, and including my manager, so everybody's in their like mid twenties to early thirties. And mm. it's, it's just, I think the camaraderie and then the jokes and just the general, you know, atmosphere of, of that team. Um, I think everybody who's a touring artist misses that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and, and then you just get antsy. I agree with you that love hate relationship. Cause while it's happening, you're just like, I hate being on a plane this much. I, mm. I hate, you know, the prep before the show, so you know, especially if you have a really bad sound check that ruins your entire mood. <laughs> yeah, which is which, which happens a lot. I feel like, especially, I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty common scene for us too. There was one gig that we did where the sound check, uh, all of our levels were locked and everything, and then somebody came who went on before us and changed everything. So we just oh, had oh, to. Dude, that happened so many times with me. And like it happened it's to like awful. Nikhil, and he's really particular about his kit, so he like really tunes it and 
very specifically and spends he spends like two hours doing it. And this one show we played, it was actually like uh, uh, so Anderson Park had played in Bombay uh, oh. a couple of years ago. And yeah, I remember. So we were like playing the opening set for that. I think this was like two or three years ago. And, yeah. Uh, uh, this was this spring of 2018. Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember, but uh, a while back, and this is exactly what happened. Like Nickel tuned the whole kit, and right before a band came, they completely changed it, and we started playing. And I, I remember like, like things like you know like putting on my ears and getting on stage and i'm like what the heck happened to the sound like it just everything. <laughs> but if the drum sound changes everything changes you know like especially yeah, when it changes so drastically and the other guy from the band has this weird thing of like i had like some like really weird way of tuning his kid where he tuned his like snare way too low so yeah. just the so whole you were playing it. Just like boom and it's just everything just went off i was like what happened to the sound and worst show of my life. It sucked. Nobody liked it. Everybody like pretty much. I saw people <laughs> leaving because I think I was just so upset, and so was everybody else. That we just like threw that energy off. Terrible. Yeah, that's happened before for us for sure. And then as as the when you're fronting, you know, the set, the only thing I can really do at that point is if my in ear mix is bad, I just take my cans. I'm like, I can't listen to a bad mix and attempt to play yeah. to that. So I'd rather just hear what everyone is hearing on the monitors and try and sing to that. Mm. But some pretty miserable times. Uh, if you have a bad sound check, it kind of throws the entire energy off. Actually, yeah. speaking of which, one time somebody had forgotten to turn off our uh, in-ear mics. Um, so, you know, like to, to communicate with each other. And we did a horrible job on one of the songs in the middle of the gig. And this is a private show, which is always very funny to play because uh, they have certain expectations of you. They want to hear what they mm. want to hear. And like right after that song ended, my drummer is just like, and everybody <laughs> in the entire audience heard that because <laughs> we, we thought that was our communication mic, but then someone had switched it on. So that was the audience mic. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, so, it it definitely yeah we've had some interesting sound check gaps but uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I mean good. some of the some of the funniest memories for sure come from you know just the touring element yeah well hopefully like uh, I think I think like another year and we'll be back to normal I mean I feel like you know that's a realistic uh, estimate I think yeah, so too I, think I always so. said like fall of 2021 seems like when we'll yeah. be back. Like completely, so yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, you know, we've got through like oh about half of it, so yeah, uh, uh, we just we just gotta stick it out. <laughs> <laughs> gotta stick it out now. So, what about like how's it been like uh, for you uh, through the lockdown? I know that you were in the US and then you like flew down through the middle of it, right, back to Bombay. No, so I wasn't in the US. I went. Um, so my parents and my sister, my my family is all there. Mm. But I didn't make it out on time. I basically just oh, missed the mark before. You were in Bombay the whole, no. whole time. Oh, I, oh, I went to my extended families in, in Bhubaneswar, actually. So for oh. the first, yeah, the first four months of lockdown, I spent it there because I live alone in Mumbai and I would have gone insane. So, mm. and because we had the strictest and still do have the strictest lockdown of the entire country, right. it's... There, for the first two months here, you like couldn't leave your house, yeah, yeah. Uh, except for like essential needs, and and it was just an awful scene. So I was like, I, I mean, I hadn't lived in Orissa since I was six years old, so it was very weird initially to go back and like be in my grandpa's house and like hmm. be reacquainted with relatives I saw maybe four times across two decades of my life, <laughs> and. Hmm. Um, but I, I'm grateful for that because I think uh, I would and never. Four months. Thought. You were there for four months. I was there for four months. Uh, had to sort of like mentally get myself situated because I don't know the life, the space, or whatever. And um, you know, the the timing of my own release was so bad because we we put out a song in the middle of this, and then the day after mm. that, uh, Irfan passed away. The day after which Rishi Kapoor passed away. So it was mm. just like. The initial first uh, month of lockdown for me and my, especially musically, was so miserable that it actually kind of, I feel like it, it, I had some resentment against the whole thing. 
Um, mm. So I didn't play music for the first few months. I just didn't mm. want anything to do with it. Uh, I was so upset by the whole thing. And I took a good long break. And then uh, somewhere around July or August, I started writing again. And I think it's the most I've written music in my entire life. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it ended up becoming a really great uh, few months after I took that break. And pretty much every so single thing after that... After you came back to Bombay or you started writing when you were in Bhubaneswar itself? Started at the end of July, but then really got to it in, in August. Um, and then pretty much everything that I have releasing now until the ne- near future, I've either co-composed or co-written or something. So it feels good to finally uh, do that again without um like because i mean obviously when you work in bollywood it's kind of all done for you and you just come and sing so mm. it's kind of it calling the shots on my own music and you know making it what i need it to be in lieu of all of the bollywood work that we don't have right now it's actually kind of been amazing so um i'm just focusing on that uh but yeah initially real rough i i did not want anything to do with music for the first couple of months so what was that you cut out I said initially it was really rough because I, I I mean like I didn't want anything to do with music for the mm-hmm. first few months and then it picked up after yeah. that. But you had okay. Kasur come out in the middle of all of this, which was wait for the audience involved <laughs> um, yeah. for the pretend audience we have. My the, the like the craziest thing I saw. I remember it was like a week after you released this on IGTV. It had some five million views, which is just generally unheard of, you know, for uh, a release of a song on Instagram, because these are numbers that you'd see on YouTube that you would see on streaming. So the response and and the news around that song, all the videos everybody was sending in, I was just like, this is this is a moment. So tell me about that <laughs> song and that release. Yeah, actually, you know, we'd been, we'd been working on Kasur since last year. And uh, initially, the plan was put it out to put it out last year. I mean, uh, you know, you know that in theory, right? I mean, we just talked about it, and like uh, they basically came up with the uh, Dar came up with the concept last year, and uh, you know, I loved it. Instantly. That was already the concept. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly this oh, thing, wow. literally, uh, and uh, that. Uh, so it, it was anyway going to be like this sort of like uh, you know, uh, collective like uh, getting all my fans together and getting them to like you know send out videos kind of a thing since last year and um then it just didn't happen i started touring then i didn't have money for it because i spent too much money touring <laughs> and then like uh, then i had money but then the pandemic hit and then finally we were like and initially we wanted to do it like wow, this is like uh, spoken with, like a true musician yeah it's because you know like it's it's not like you don't have money but sometimes you don't have like cash flow because like you're like you know waiting for stuff to come in of course. and like so so uh so that it just kept getting delayed for some some reason or the other and uh, i really wanted to do it and then when the pandemic hit uh, we decided to do it because it was like actually doable because i was like dude uh this is pretty much what we wanted to do the only difference was that like i wanted to i mean these guys wanted me to be in a studio and shoot my, my parts like really nicely and that couldn't happen so we shot it at home and my girlfriend helped me out so it was you know uh, a little diy on that count but the rest of it was supposed to happen exactly how it was going to happen anyway and like i knew like from the time dar shared the concept with me that this is going to be like amazing I mean, and I very rarely yeah. feel like that. I feel like usually, like I am like a fairly cynical person, and I'm like, mm, I don't think it's gonna work out, and everything's gonna suck. But when like this idea came from me, I was like, dude, this is gonna be so great. We gotta do it. So we did it, and uh, yeah, I did. I and and uh, weirdly, I think it did even more better than I expected. Like I didn't even expect. Uh, I thought it would do well, but like considering like where I was at. uh and the kind of reach i had it just reached like that many more people than i had imagined so uh, and there's yeah, still was, uh, fan videos right there's still doodle still videos it's yeah. insane yeah that 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 song was really a movement i feel like um uh like in in independent music so well done on that i was i was looking at that number a week later i was like there are 5 million views on an igtv video that is unheard of So I was very like 
in all. So, I, I mean, that was a, a bit of inspiration for, I think, a lot of us who um, are, are doing more non-film and independent work, for sure. I think everybody yeah, was I mean, just I like, heard, like uh, I mean, you've, you've done a, like a bunch of non-film. I think one of the first songs I heard uh you know of yours was such nawe which i loved and i think I, i i think i told you about that also like really yeah you know, that's like uh that song did really really well and like you've done a bunch of like independent stuff along with the bollywood it's really cool i feel yeah i try to dip my toes into both because i'm um, and we've talked about this before my uh background in music was in like the chicago independent hip hop scene so right. i came from the school of like you know working with no budgets and then uh, working with too much money and it's <laughs> like somewhere in between um trying to make good music happen and uh my my introduction to that in a professional space was with chance and so when i came here bollywood was like such a gear shift because you you don't get to call the shots there's a lot of other stakeholders mm-hmm. and that's not necessarily a bad thing because in in you know exchange for that your the reach is really big and um more people get to hear your voice for the most part but i think uh this year i got to kind of go back to independent and non-film work more um like intensely and that's been fantastic uh cuz it's something i missed I, i i miss being able to be a decision maker about my own music and you know i think this fantastic. is the and this is a really interesting thing and i i, I sorry i I'm sorry i cut you off but i just want you to actually like uh uh and i feel like people would be curious to hear about this because there's so much about this independent versus bollywood thing you know what mm. i'm saying like and there's pros and cons to each i guess right and i think like you would really know that considering you've done both uh you know yeah an ample amount and like yeah there's lo- lack of creative control but then you get something in return maybe so can you like uh you know uh see a bit more about that because uh, yeah. i feel like uh i feel like i get that question asked a bunch not just by like journalists but just people in general and like a lot of people and musicians starting to like uh get into this have a really cynical attitude towards bollywood or others don't so you know like yeah. what's what's like the realistic thing out there i think the the reality is is that if your work and and i'm sure you can attest to this too if your work or your sound is very authentically your work that's why it's about as a musician cuz you have put out work in bollywood like cool guy hum kahan is a very you song still at the end of the day right that 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 is a very much a jazz song and a you song like both of you are very there as musicians mm-hmm. in that um so when you make enough of a mark or when you have enough of an authentic sound and an original sound they will actually ask for that so unless you're doing exclusively you know playback singing i think um you can you can still kind of mold things in in the direction that you want it to go uh which is fantastic and then yeah bollywood is the giant right it's the dal chawal of this mm. country people really that's where we get a lot of our music um that's where we have pretty much only gotten music for for like 60 70 years before the the last 20 or 30 right and um that that makes it tricky they're they're just such a giant in in the mm. music space it's like 80% of the music that people listen to is mm. bollywood yeah. more maybe even and um yeah, probably more. that probably more yeah to be, yeah. yeah quite honestly probably more and uh so you get an audience you get a huge viewer base and a huge listener base but uh i think there's this idea that the only music worth listening to is independent music or the only music worth uh you know pouring ourselves into is independent music because of this idea of like control and creative control or whatever mm. But I think like I said if your if your work can speak for itself if your voice and and your writing is authentic they start asking for that there have been plenty of times yeah. that now I'm I'm hearing the brief that other singers get is to sound like me so if mm. you make that mark you can you can mm. carve your own niche you can carve your own space even within mm. bollywood but it just depends on how willing you are to really stick to your sound and right. not be it's so then comes the issue of like can you do original and you know uh work that sounds like yourself then yeah that's up to you do you want to be completely moldable do you want to be so so moldable that you don't have a sound probably then you don't get to complain about the lack of control cuz right and that's I, I that's think up that's to you i don't think that's a bad thing right like i mean yeah. if you want to do that if that's what you want to do and just like 
stick to a certain like industry sound and mold yourself into it. I don't think there's anything wrong about that, but yeah. Also, uh, yeah, also completely fine to do that because that's something that I had to learn too. Because what mm-hmm. we do is I I I talk about it as if it's like melodic voice acting when you're in a booth singing for Bollywood. It's like character singing. So, right. it's some parts acting and it's 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 mm-hmm. a fascinating way to work because you do get a brief. Mm-hmm. You get what scene of the movie this is right. and uh what the girl is saying and what she sounds like, what she looks mm-hmm. like. So, that is a fun challenge for me and and i grew up on bollywood i grew up mostly on that um genre of music you know big sound and big production and so i love that but uh mm. within that i have to remind myself that i'm here for a reason that i sound the way that i do and uh i should stick to that so that mm-hmm. you know i don't become so completely uh like something that i wouldn't even be able to recognize Right. But yeah, independent music though, I think, you know, it is growing and largely because of artists like you, but it's it's a slow and steady climb. I think it's got a ways to go. Even in a year like this where mm. um it should typically be dominating, but we we do still need the help of, you know, a feature a feature from an actor in the video or mm. uh, a bump from uh, a Bollywood star and in their instagram stories or something so we have to kind of understand that that is the giant in the room and we have to make peace with it um i mean i think like uh sorry sorry go on go on go on no no that's it yeah (laughs) no i was just saying i think it's a uh, i mean it's a really refreshing way of looking at the what you're saying and uh uh it's it's also just about like not being rigid about stuff i feel like you know it's like you can do both like you were saying basically which you are doing and i've kind of done as well and like you don't need to close yourself to either thing and at the end of the day you make your own decision right like i mean if you want to really really keep that sound of uh, you know to your your own distinct uh, sound like really really alive you can choose that choose to do that and you might have to play a bit of a price for it but it could help you out also you know like totally i mean uh so it's or it's, it's a bit of a gamble you get featured on the president of the united states uh music <laughs> list and that's then you thing, don't need to worry it's a gamble because <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it's a gamble but i don't think that like i just i just like i just wanted to like address that because i feel like people shouldn't close their mind and i think it is possible Agreed. to really and uh, and, and there are good like people and bad people out there in terms of you know like who you work with because uh uh again like it's just i find a lot of people like demonizing bollywood and i've had like great experiences working there with a lot I of people too. i've also had bad <laughs> bad experiences working uh, with a lot of people but i've also had bad experiences working with a lot of people in the indie industry as well so it's yeah. just like you know that you've got to just like watch out for yourself but uh, yeah Yeah, I think it's it, it, there is a very clear war between the two uh worlds and I just don't think it needs to to be that way. It doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. Because also that just, that usually just comes at the cost of like the musician's enjoyment of exactly. the 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 experience. Like I yeah. enjoy both completely the same. So that I think I don't have really a preference. I think I think where we could grow though as an industry is um allowing you know musicians to be the the face and not just the voice of their own music. Absolutely, I think yeah. I think that's a that's a fair critique to have because we're one of the last um big music industries of the world where our original music isn't even fronted by the singers. So, right. uh that that we have to work on because yeah. um you know we we have so long had Bollywood celebrities be the face of our music. It's um it, it's it's got to kind of shift a little bit i think musicians should kind of come to the forefront so are we, I agree, are we switch up to this I think, i think that's something that will happen slowly once uh, you know uh, as as the independent music industry grows and there are like icons within that industry that people look up to and like start recognizing and that will like, totally. you know start like flowing back and forth in terms of you know the two worlds but uh, yeah Wait, so you've been in Delhi or have you been in Jaipur this whole time? I've been in Delhi the whole time. Okay. Yeah. How has that been going? Uh, you know, it was really nice for a bit and then it was not nice and then it was fine again. 
and then not nice again it was kind of like that it's been real waves for me <laughs> like it like it started off as being like i was quite happy almost in a way i mean because you know i f- i feel like mm. uh, i i i thought way too much last year like for me i mean i'm just not like cut out for like your death. end of year tour was intense yeah. yeah it was too intense so last year was like after last year and i was just like done i was like depressed i was physically in emotionally like in a really bad place i just started dating my girlfriend so you know like when you like go on tour right around that time it's bad you know because you're anyway having like communication lags and you're just getting to know each other yeah so there was a lot of like stress there and then just the general stress of touring gets on to you and like it just i feel like gets on your nerves and you start acting like uh, you know uh, like uh, it's just you're tired all the time you're cranky all the time you know so yeah. it gave me a break from all that i came back and it's just like it just gave me like a solid one month break where i like could finally work on my health and like eat properly and you know i mean just eat like Wait. healthy and sleep <laughs> long hours for one sleep yeah i haven't slept like this in like 5 years i think i mean so regularly like okay. i sleep like 8 hours every day which is like so basically long story short it was nice for that first month because you know i think i just needed rest and then because it feels like a vacation at first um <laughs> I mean, actually, yeah, if you don't mind talking about it without getting into too much of the personal details, how is it like, you know, going public with your relationship? That's a big thing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't honestly, like, I didn't think it was a big deal. Even when I did it, like, my parents and, like, my friends were like, oh, why are you guys, like, just, like, <laughs> told everyone. I was like, yeah, so, because that's what I've always done. I'm pretty, like, I'm just like that. I mean, even, like, you know, uh, I'm not, like, a very, like, I mean how are you going to like hide something like that anyway you know if I'm Some, something that important yeah yeah i'm not going to be able to hide it like i'm you know she, like if i'm dating somebody she's going to be you know end up being in my like stories and in my like you know like posts and then what i'm just going to like deny and it's like i'm you know it's <laughs> sounded too juvenile to not talk about it to be honest yeah positive thing to look at <laughs> during this lockdown it's like there's just so much shit going on and then there's just like a moment in the video doesn't she give you a, like a kiss on the cheek or something in kasoor no does she so, no, no, something no. something like that happens somewhere that maybe happens it's not that some big other big. there's an un, there's a different couple that does that maybe it's that uh, there's a couple but anyways that but i put up a put out like a video cuz we did these like kasoor filters at one point and i uh, that's what i'm thinking of yeah yeah so i did one where like you know like we did a little kiss so um that's so great but i i think that like uh it, i think you're right about the fact that a lot that we do a lot to hide what we're up to in our lives and how can you hide someone that important yeah and it this this is no reason to hide it you know i mean i just don't see a reason to hide it so you know that's fantastic like, kudos it's not to like you i made a big deal about it and i posted like hey guys check out my girl like it's not like i do that it's just like post <laughs> photos with a person i'm like dating right now like what's the big deal so that's so uh, great but, but yeah, i i like I mean, I that like in an effort to not make it a big deal <laughs> i made it a bigger deal <laughs> than you're like calm down <laughs> <laughs> yeah That's no so no good. i mean uh, it's a valid question i feel like uh, i've i've got that i mean you know people yeah. people say that but that's fantastic but, uh, good for you guys um and yeah. you've been doing a lot of like i think your setup in your house has now become something everybody like ha- has gotten used to seeing um is yeah. she helping like film the videos and everything i haven't done that many like uh, she hmm. helped out with like kasoor for sure I mean she is like pretty much the camera woman or like the DOP for that video I feel like cuz she <laughs> shot all the parts of inside but like yeah of course she helped me out once in a while I mean a lot of times I'm just like uh setting frame for something so you know uh mm. she helped me out every now and then yeah yes yeah 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 and then I think for me like I had a release end of April uh for a video that we kind of like what you were saying we planned doing this before the pandemic and mm. it had nothing to do with communication regarding the pandemic but literally our treatment was a couple that is long distance communicating over video chat 
Oh. And this, like, well, be- it was shot in February. It was shot in February before any of this happened. And uh, it just was eerily timed. You know, the release happened at the end of April. And I remember thinking that, like, we did we predict this awful <laughs> scenario? Because <laughs> the entire video, actually, it, it's like a, it's about the part of my life that happened after I moved here. And it's like directly inspired from my real life. Um, mm. And like letting uh, a, like a romantic space go uh, in order to do this career. And it actually, it's so crazy because like the locations used were where I had my meetings when I mm. first came here. They were at like Ria's office where I first mm. sat and talked to her about music. And mm. um, we just, we were revisiting a lot of those act- real moments. And then when it came and like my band is in the video playing the band in the video. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's cute. So it was a very like, yeah, it was like a very in-house uh, experience. But I, for us, I mean, when we made that video, we had no idea what this monster of a year would end up being. And um, the entire thing is just me and the person I'm dating on video chat, like having fights, making up, whatever. And then <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, that's every video now. <laughs> <laughs> like every single music video in the independent scene has become about like long distance video relationships. Um, yeah, because it's really all, really sad. yeah. Cause it's what we can all manage to do right now. Um, that's true. and, uh, it's so funny that our treatment was n- now, you know, is now the treatment for every single video in 2020. <laughs> so <laughs> except like literally except yours other than that. <laughs> Everything this is was about a this this video you're talking about uh, this video I'm talking you're talking about I'm sorry is this is for night like night China? China. yeah oh yeah so the the entire thing was uh like we shot it last week of February and um, we we felt very good about it because uh, AKFC shot the video so this is uh, Ria's own team shot it and. A lot of people I'm very comfortable like acting and emoting on screen around because you and I have talked about this. We're very awkward on camera. Um, I I don't know how to command the screen at all. I oh, so you were I not did. in it. I was in it. I was. Oh, in you were in it, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember seeing I, this. Yeah. Yeah, I I was in it and I was like acting in it. So that that one was interesting for me because I I've never. Uh, done that before <laughs> usually it's like every video i do i just have to like smile and play a guitar and then everyone's happy with it <laughs> so this had a real story and a plot so we we had to get some real acting out of me That's um, really yeah but but it was about a long distance relationship on screens and then look at what the year ended up being <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm glad like it worked out by the way you want to like uh, why don't you like sing a couple of lines, lines from the song that song um yeah. yeah 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 i can do that i oh f- fun fact i have another injury <laughs> well you oh, know this again? yeah i have another injury i have a spinal injury now so i can't play guitar until that's better um i am medically recommended to be off guitar till the end of the year but uh yeah yeah so i have a i have a neck injury right now i have a vertebral injury on my neck um I don't know <laughs> I yeah, saw you and, like and, uh, I saw one of your posts about it recently also about how painful it is man shit it's awful that's like and, and uh, you, you should rough. you should watch this too because it's come actually as a as a direct result of my posture when I play guitar so it's this movement oh, it's yeah, a, I've yeah that. it's directly a, a heard result heard of this action so it's the complete right shoulder and neck injury um so oh, watch oh. out do your Not yoga, do your yeah. stretches, and then you can yeah. still play guitar I mean, happily. I do, uh, <laughs> <some stretches. laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I just have this awful spinal curvature that literally looks like somebody, like anyone can look at that and be like, that's a guitarist. <laughs> that is just exactly the curve it follows. Yeah. <laughs> that's that dope dude 
<laughs> yeah. We recorded that song in LA with uh, Ed Sheeran oh. and um, Ariana Grande's vocal producer, which was oh. sick. And sick. Bieber. They were they were remixing that song I don't care that Sheeran and I'm sorry he was mixing that the vocals for um, I don't care the same day so I kept having to be kicked out of the room <laughs> <laughs> because he's like they have deadlines and I got to do this and then we would come back and record and then out again and in but uh, well, that was a hell of an experience because then I got to see like honestly I just wanted to use that like ten thousand dollar Telefunken mic. <laughs> I want to see what this gives me vocally, but um, it was unreal. I think there's some recording experiences that you just can't forget. Definitely one of them. Oh man. Yeah. I can't wait to get back to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we end, what, what are you working on right now? The most cheesy question everybody asks. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, that's what I was going to say when we were talking about that whole like pandemic, like, you know, just the lockdown thing. I have not been like creative at all. Like I've barely been writing. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Like it just really has been like a six month long holiday for me. I've written like very little. I'm glad like Kasoor happened. So I feel like I was like at least somewhat. You, had, you put out something. I yeah. put out something, but uh, I haven't really like written a lot. Uh so yeah, it's been it's been okay. I mean, I think I'm gonna start writing now again because uh, mm. uh, I tried to write. I wasn't happy with anything, so I just straight up took a break. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm just gonna like chill and like <laughs> like watch a lot of movies and like cook because I've been doing that a bunch and that's been really fun." But that's about it. So yeah, but you know, I've been writing like for a few years now, so I have stuff. So I'm like. Focusing more on like putting, like going back through older stuff and putting things together for the next record. Uh, That's fantastic. More. Yeah. So, so there is a next record. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. I mean, you know, if I, I hope so. Yeah, there should be a next record. Right? That's the only thing I know how to do. So. <laughs> yeah, <like laughs> that that kind bad, of banking but... on this career to work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have any more records. Uh, what are you doing here then? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Should be good. Well, that sounds good. Then you have a, I mean, I also feel like what you were saying earlier, uh, you're getting to do a lot of this, like spending time with your girlfriend and being, yeah. you know, That's in a relationship yeah. and enjoying that, that wasn't there when you were touring so much last year. Yeah. So good. Soak that and, in. And and my family, like I've never felt, uh, spent so much time together my with my family before in since like school, I think, which has been really nice. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like you're in school and you just want to get out of home because you just want to get away from your parents. I feel like when you're younger and then you come back from college, you know, it's like, but because like, now you're a fully formed human person with like yeah, ideas yeah, and feelings yeah. and it, you don't so feel now, like they're your parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's been, I'm really grateful for that actually. Like uh, legit. It's, it's been really nice. Well, actually, because like I'm not traveling anywhere. I'm not, I just, I'm just living at home. I've never like spent such little money. I mean, not never, but you're gonna months. you're gonna have a very uh, bougie next music video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but again, he like, did a one eighty on, like, on like, his uh, imaging. Like fucking like hummers in it, like just <laughs> you're gonna have Bugattis in your next video. <laughs> yeah, like go for the whole thing. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon. 